But what we're talking about today is this. You need to understand, look at it, God's looking for you. You know, we go through life, and, and God is set out. He's, he's looking for you. He's not sitting up here doing this big old God thing. Maybe your daddy was mean to you and a grouch and didn't have a good relationship, and you're probably looking at your daddy the same, go looking at the Heavenly Father the same. Oh, he's mean looking down and trying to catch me doing something wrong. No. I want you to understand that God's looking for you this morning. He loves you. Why do you need to understand that? Why is that important? Because why do you need to know that God's looking for you? Because he's crazy about you, man. He loves you. He's crazy about you. He created you. You got to think. Go back in time. If you know anything about the Bible, he created uh, the angels first. And the angels fail. They're these great angelic powerful beings. He, he created hell to stick the angels in that refused to follow him. And he, he just thought that was going to work. And then he created Adam and Eve and said, okay, they're in a perfect situation. Created the earth. And what happened? They got tricked by the devil. And they didn't follow. They sinned. And then look what happened. He's had to flood the world, start all over again with some people in a boat, and look at what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Everything that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah is happening in 2022, if you know anything about that. Sexual revolution, a sex, homosexual revolution, murder. And look at what's going on in the country today. There, Satan has an agenda against all Ten Commandments. If you turn and look at the Ten Commandments in the Bible, you'll see there's a plan in this world right now that's being unleashed to do everything the opposite of what God says. If y'all want happy life, all you got to do is follow these Ten Commandments. Don't have to, you get to. And Satan's twisted all these things around. And so it's, it's, it's hard. So then he made us says that we're made lesser than the angels. We don't have all those powers. Can't just boom, be somewhere. We don't have powers and angels. Do We're lesser, and we have a choice. He gave us a complete choice. You can choose to follow God, or you can choose to follow the things of the world. So you have a hundred. It's your choice. Satan doesn't want you to think that the choice you have to make today has anything to do with eternity. He doesn't want you worried about eternity. He wants you worried about your retirement more than eternity. Eternity. He wants you worried about your career. He wants you worried about your family, about your kids or your grandkids and all these things. He wants our focus to stay off of God and on the things of the world. And as longer he can keep us distracted, the more chance he has of winning in your life. And so Jesus knew, God knew that it was going to be tough on us. And I hate to read this parable because I, I don't like it. I love the Word of God, but I don't like this story because I don't like what he's talking about, and I don't like being compared to the animals that he's talking about in this story because I think they're stupid. And he says, we're stupid. <laughs> okay, that's what God's saying. Y'all are stupid, and he, all of us. This is what you're like. You're stupid. If you think this animal that he's talking about here, so look at it in Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 1. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Find that in your Bible, and we'll start reading about stupid animals. <laughs> Luke chapter 15, verse 1. It says, Now there were tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. To hear him. They wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. Jesus wasn't begging them to come to church. They wanted to get in the word. They wanted to hear from him. And so they're drawing near to him. Jesus, he was a very friendly guy, apparently, and people liked him. He helped them get their life back. And they naturally wanted to be around. They wanted to hang out. They didn't want to hang out at the church. Notice that. They are church people. They wanted to hang out with Jesus. Because Jesus was different. How many of you know Jesus is different? Let me hear you say amen. The world thinks he's some kind of bad, evil guy, is what Satan wants you to think. But he's different. He's friendly. He's a loving Heavenly Father. Look at the next verse, too. So the Pharisees, they got mad. The Pharisees and the scribes are grumbling 
about this. And he says, this is a man who receives sinners, and he eats with them. They didn't do that. See, the, these lost people didn't want to have anything to do with the church people, and, but they wanted something to do with Jesus. And so the church people are criticizing Jesus. Why? He, he didn't judge them. <laughs> Y'all think, you new guys, think you're going to be judged when you come in here. You ain't going to be judged when you come in here because we all done messed up 10,000 times more than you. Paul got forgiven, and he, was a, he chased Christians down and killed them. And I guarantee you ain't done anything that bad, and if he can forgive him, he'll forgive you. And if he'll forgive me and give me a new start, he can forgive you, he will forgive you, and give you a new start today. Amen? Guys, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. And so, so he, didn't just, he didn't judge him. He was friendly. He helped him in life, get him turned around. Look at the next verse. In verse 3 it says, and he told them this parable. He says, what man wouldn't leave a hundred sheep? This is what he's comparing us to. What man wouldn't leave a hundred sheep if one, is lo- one of them is lost and not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that's lost and find it. In verse 5, it says, and, oh, I heard something. And verse 5 says, and, and, we, and when he had found it, he laid that sheep on his shoulders and he rejoiced. He rejoiced. Look at verse 6. And when he comes home, he calls together all of his sheep and the neighbors and his friends. He says, hey, saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that were lost. I thought I heard a sheep. Did y'all hear something? Did y'all hear a sheep? I swore I heard a sheep. Did it? There's a sheep. Everybody be still. Because if you scare a sheep, they poop. Oh. <laughs> Don't stick your finger out in the aisle. They love to get it. <laughs> There's another one over there. L- Lord have mercy. How did sheep get in the church house? They're just wandering around lost and that's what sheep do and that's why he's comparing us to sheep sheep are they're kind of (laughs) goofy sheep they're not very smart sheep aren't very smart uh they're kind of hard to figure out they're a lot prone to wonder you think they'd get together and herd up right now uh they this one over here smelling somebody's cologne thinks he likes you sir you better be careful (laughs) He smells the dog on this one over here. I don't. <laughs> and these, but sheep aren't real smart. They're very prone to get away from safety and get out by themselves. And coyotes, wolves, cougars, eat them for a snack because they prone. They're prone to get where they're not supposed to be. And uh, they poop all over the place. By the way, so don't scare them too much. And. Uh, but y'all, I need you to help me because I'm the shepherd here. The Bible says I'm an under-shepherd of the church. I'm not the Lord Jesus. But, uh, West, I mean, y'all, y'all don't sit down. Nobody get up. I just want y'all, to, everybody to sit down. And I want y'all to see if y'all can herd those sheep to the shepherd while you're sitting down. Stick your arms out there and kind of push them this way. You got somebody standing up. They need to sit down over there. So y'all get behind them and herd them. If you're sitting down, if you're standing up, you can't move. Hurt them, hurt them to the shepherd. Get your hands behind them. He's eating a t-shirt. So go, you can holler at them, go hoof, 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 something like that. Hoof. All right, hey, when they, there you go, get your hands behind them, push them. Poke them in the ribs, push them, do something. No, no, you got to get, sit down, Dan Lester. Stay down, sit, 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 sit. This ain't working. This not working a bit. Hmm. I tell you what, let me have a youth. I got a youth up here picked out. Come help me. 
Who we got? Who we got? All right, Dakota's going to come, come try to hurt them up here on the stage with me. Remember, don't scare them too much. They poop. <laughs> At least they found each other now. That one trying to call up in that boy's lap. <laughs> People moving. <laughs> Uh, I didn't tell you, uh, Dakota, sheep are stinky too. Yeah, they stink. They're oily and they're greasy and they're nasty. Ah, 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 ah. One you, get out of the way, guys. Come on. Pay attention. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Well, this ain't working either. Come on, Dakota, get after him, buddy. Look at all that stuff on the floor back there. <laughs> there won't be anybody running out of here today. They'll be, <laughs> okay. All right, we got them coming this way. Come on. This ain't. All right, you got them coming. Come on, bring them around to me. This ain't working, is it? Push them. Push. Push on them hard. There you go. Push, push, push. Well, that one's looking at my wife like, your hair looks good. <laughs> it's a color of hay, hay a little bit, you know. So, whee. Come on, bring them around. Oh, oh, oh. All right. I'm on. There you go. Bring them around. Just bring them right up here. There you go. Try to get them up here to the shepherd. There you go. Bring them up here. Here, little sheep, sheep, sheep. Up, 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 up. Now they're going to the back. I'll tell you what. You can let them run around here. I'm going to get another youth. Give me another youth. Come on here, Jesse. That way y'all can cut them off, you know, if they come around. Let's see if you can't get them to come down this center aisle, if you don't mind. Cut them off. Don't let them go down there. No, no, no. Here you go. Here you go. Let them come down this center aisle. And that way, Dakota, if you come around this other side, maybe you can keep There you go. Now y'all teamwork on them. Be careful, sheep bite. They really do. <laughs> They're not as sweet and nice as you think they are. All right. Come on, come on. Y'all get double team them. Get them coming down this aisle right here. There you go. There you go. You can push them. Make sure you get down this center aisle over here. Hey, you other youth, come help them. The two guys ain't cutting it. Y'all girls, come help them. Girl power. Yeah, let's get five youth on them. Come on. All we got to do is get them going down the center aisle. Not that aisle, this aisle over here. Don't let him come down this aisle. Come over here. Turn him around. There you go. All right, now get them coming down this center aisle for them. Bring them to the shepherd. I'm the shepherd. See, so bring them to me. Come on, come on. Yeah. There we go. We got one coming. Hang on there. Oh, good, good, good. Here we go. We got them coming. We got them. And then sometimes, oh, obstacles happen. Look at that little demon jumping out there in front of them. Look at him. Come on now. Hey, would y'all get that demon out of the way? Get that devil out of the way. Look at him. Get, get rid of him. Move the obstacles out of the way. Get, get rid of him. Get, boy, this is not working, is it? Come on. Get rid of the devil. Get rid of the demon. Get him, get him over. Oh, he's fighting back. All right. Hey, hey, demon, demon, in Jesus' name, get your butt over there and sit down. Thank you. Now let's bring him on up here. Bring him up here to the shepherd. Okay. Can y'all bring Okay. That's good. All right, y'all give these guys a round of applause. Thank y'all, you. Thank you. Megan, Megan, come on up here. Y'all watch this. Now, this lady owns these sheep, and she knows these sheep, and these sheep know her real well. Oh, hi, Mama. Hey. Look at there. Just walk right up to her. Letting her put a halter on him. 
There you go. Can you bring them up here? Try. Come on up. She be kind. She come on. There you go. There we go. Bring him over here. That's pretty cool. I think God's made a pretty good um, deal. If we're like this, this is pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Trying to get us to come to the shepherd. <laughs> Hey, y'all give Megan a good round of applause. Thank you, Megan. Y'all can, you can take these out. She's got her trailer parked over here. Uh, I just, that's what God says we're like. Looks like Tony Plomsky going down the stairs, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the sheep will be out there for your kids in the trailer if y'all want to help. If y'all want to go pet them afterwards, they're really sweet sheep. They're nice sheep. So I appreciate everybody helping me with that. Uh, my point is God searching for you as a lost sheep. And, uh, and you being able to, you got some choices to make. Um, and, you know, Sheep aren't as nice as you think they are. I had, uh, I brought my, you said I need my dog. I had five or six sheep out here we were using for mutton busting, and I had my little puppy, you know, and he was already working young cattle, JJ, that I've had in here, and, and he's already working young cattle, and, and um, I put him on those sheep, and one of those sheep, a ram, come out of there and charged him and hit him and smashed him in the ground. And he was on the ground looking at me like, Daddy, this, get this thing off of me. <laughs> you know, and I, I got friends that raise sheep, and they say they're, they're mean. They'll kick you. They'll jump on you. They'll bite you. They're not as nice and sweet as you think they are. But, but uh, my point is, is that God compares us to these animals. And he compares us to these. And so um, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 says that all we, like sheep, have gone astray, and we are turned, we have turned every one of us are on his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of, our, of us all. And so God's looking for you, but he compares us to sheep. And he, he wants to give you the blessings of eternal life, but he compares, he says it's not going to be hard because we're like sheep and we're prone to go astray. And if you want to go to heaven, you got to stop being like a sheep is what he's saying. And you can't keep on being like a sheep. So what do we do? If, you, if you're going to be saved, you need a shepherd. You have to come to the shepherd. You have to come to, first of all, the Lord Jesus Christ as the ultimate shepherd you also need to be involved in a herd. Circle J Cowboy Church is a herd for you. Why? Because Satan is the wolf. And he's a wolf, he says, and the Bible says, in sheep's clothing. So Satan is sitting in your life close to you. You don't know where he is. And you think he's just another person or whatever he is, how he's disguising himself. So, but not only that, Satan is the wolf, but there's a wolf pack and that is his demons. And his demons are, are active in trying to distract us and do anything he can to keep us from turning to God. If he can just keep us in any way from coming to the shepherd, and if he can just do that, then he can keep us lost, wandering around by ourselves, and go to hell. And all he's got to do is put obstacles in front of you, just like that demon threw those chairs out there in front of that. And, and all he's got to do is keep obstacles, make it uh, inconvenient, and, and, and all, all he has to do is keep you obstacles in front of you. And if that happens, the longer he keeps those obstacles in front of you, no matter what it is, you might be married to your obstacle. 
I'm just saying. He or she might be the very thing keeping you from coming to Christ. You maybe gave birth to your obstacles. And you're so busy trying to keep your kids in all these activities that you never come to Christ. Your career may be your... These aren't necessarily bad things. Yes, it can be bad things. It can be sin and the temptations of this world. But it can also be all these good things. Any obstacle, the longer he gets us chasing obstacles, the greater Satan has an opportunity to win and you lose and you go to a devil's hell. And if that happens, you're going to miss all of the great things, the wonderful things, the powerful things, all of the riches that God has for you. The riches aren't here on this earth no matter what anybody thinks. The richest man on the face of the earth can't compare to the lowest and the most poverty person that makes it to heaven. <laughs> because the richest man here on earth, just like the story in Luke chapter 16, he, he went and he goes and he puts all this stuff together. He has this great life and Lazarus goes to hell. I mean, goes to heaven and this rich man goes to hell. And his mind, his wits, all the choices he'd made and all the business decisions... He's in horror and this fire, and he says, please send Lazarus over there. Just put the tip of his finger in water and come touch my tongue because I'm in anguish. Not only that, he's worried about the choices he's made in his life. Please go tell my family, my brothers, my fa that don't, don't do what I did in life. The riches of this world will just get you to hell. The fall, you need to come to Jesus Christ. And he said, if they wouldn't listen to me then... They're not going to listen to me now. God put us here with a choice. And if you don't find the shepherd, and if you don't let the shepherd find you, you won't receive any of those benefits. So what steps do you need to take? I want to quickly give you three simple things that just, they're not, they're not, they're not these aren't wow, but they are the way you come to Christ. Number one is just stop running from God. Stop running from Him. Those sheep were like them. They were trying to go the opposite direction. <laughs> they were going the opposite direction they were supposed to go. They were running from them. The Scripture says in Acts 26, it says, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness and sins and forgiveness of their sins and a place among those who are sanctified set set aside in God's herd sanctified by faith and so you got to stop running this is the first if you're going to let God find you if you're going the opposite direction of God simple you're not going to find number two you got to not just stop running from him, you got to step towards him now that's a different deal when those sheep finally got up here and when Megan came up here, they just like, oh. And the first thing I saw one of these sheep do is step towards Megan. Step towards her. The rest of this is pushing. James chapter uh, 4, verse 8 says, draw near to God and, said, and he'll draw near to you. So you got to take that first step. He's not going to chase you down. He says, y'all are going astray. He says, if you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. And how you do that? You cleanse your hands, you sinners, and you purify your hearts. You're double-minded. You need a herd. And where you'll find God is in a church. The third thing you need to do is set your love on God. Set your love on God. Why? Because your shepherd, God... Your shepherd, the Lord, he's looking for you because he loves you. And why should you set your love back towards him? And why should you set your love on him? See, the only people that will be saved are people that are in his herd, in the herd. It says, don't forsake the assembling as some have done. And he's talking about church. He's talking about church. Don't do that. Get in a herd. You need the protection of the herd. Sheep get out by themselves. Coyotes, cougars. I got pictures sent to me of a cougar that is three to four. No, they said it was less than 300 yards from my deer stand. 
and I'm bow hunting right now. And I, st- I h- hid out of my stand the other night, and it was dark, and I heard something behind me go, boom, 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 boom. And, of course, I had a pistol on me <laughs> in case that cougar showed up. And I jumped around like this, and then it wasn't anything. I just got the heebie-jeebies, you know. But when sheep get off, you get off by yourself. You got every right to have the heebie-jeebies because the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking who he's going to devour. And so it's a big deal. And Satan wants to keep you, keep you by yourself. And so why set your love on God? It's the only way that you'll begin is heard. And I'll say this. If you don't set your love on God, you'll set your, th- your love on the things of the world. How do you get in the herd? You saw that screen put up saddle up right there. You click on that with a QR code and you register. If you don't want to take a picture of that QR code, which they're all over the building, just go to cjcc.church and hit the saddle up button and register and say, reserve me a place. I want to be in saddle up. That's the first Sunday of the month. It's going to be at four o'clock. I mean, 4.30 and go to 6 o'clock. We feed you. We had a blast. <laughs> the team leaders are there to meet you. The, the small group leaders are all there to meet you. Uh, we do some giveaways. It's just fun. If you looked at the pictures, it's like a big old giant party. We roll out the red carpet for you. And it doesn't matter whether you're an old member or just here for the first time. If you need to get saddled up and start doing something for the Lord, that meeting is for you. And as long as we have people registered, we're going to do it once a month. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 says, And you shall love the Lord your God. How do you love him? What is he talking about? What, what does that mean? Set your love on God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Remember he said in Isaiah 53, verse 6, he says, All we, like sheep, have gone astray, and we've turned every one of us away from the Lord. When we first came in here, we read Luke 15, starting in verse 5 and 6, said he's looking for you. He's searching for you. Verse 5, it says, if he finds you, and if he finds you, that means you're going to pray to receive Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, here I am. I'm going to come to you. You do that. When he finds you, he's not going to condemn you and say, what the world have you been doing? He's, he's standing there like this with open arms. And you're weary and tired and worn out. The shepherd here says he put him on his shoulders and rejoice. Verse 6 says he comes home and he calls together all of his friends and they throw a party. And the last verse, verse 7, look at this. This is what happens if you come to Christ. And so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance so today the Lord is looking for you God's looking for you will you stop running from God number one and number two today will you actually step towards him and then number three will you set your love on him set your love on him with all your heart all your mind all your soul, all your strength. I don't like that God compares me to something stupid. I don't like it. I don't like sheep. Because they're stupid. You can't hurt them. You see them, we're trying to hurt them. They're going the opposite direction. But to be honest with you, as a pastor, I feel like that's the way y'all are sometimes. I really do. I'm trying to get you in this herd. And you, you just got obstacles, old devils throwing obstacles in front of you, and you're just turning and running up the opposite direction. 
It don't take a big obstacle to turn you around either. Why? Because you're stupid. You're like a sheep. Me too. I don't like being compared to a sheep. You know what I want to be compared to? I want to be a sold out warrior for Jesus Christ. I don't want to be fickle. I don't want to be a sissy. I want to be tough for God. I want to remain. Horse gate last night. That was men. Challenge to men. Remain. Remain faithful to your wife. Remain faithful to the Lord with your time, with your abilities, with your earthly treasures. I want to remain when it gets tough. When Satan throwing stuff in my face, me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't want to be like a sheep. I hate sheep. I like wool, but that's about as far as I'm going to get liking a sheep. <laughs> so what does God want you to do today? Are you going to stop running? Are you going to step to him? Are you going to set your love on him? Let's pray. Father, we come to you. It is a privilege to come and just realize that we're like sheep. I don't like that. But I feel like that's a really, I know it's a real good description of how we act. And every little distraction, we go the opposite direction. We're hard to herd, hard to handle. We stink. And you just compare us to sheep. I'm just asking you, God, I'm apologizing for me being like a sheep. And for our church being like a sheep. And all of us, Lord, we, we just come to you. And I just pray you hear our prayer, our cry. You're calling us. You want us. You're looking for us. And today we're going to step to you. And we're going to set our love to you. Set our love on you. And if that's you today, my encouragement is it starts with a prayer. Your second step is letting people know. Maybe it's just letting me know. And then your third step is following the Lord and saying, hey, the first Sunday of the month, I'm going to be baptized. I, I, I got, I'm going to quit being a stupid sheep and I'm going to follow him. And he, all of a sudden, he just starts using you in his herd and, and growing you. So, just before you leave, I'm going to give you a chance right now to pray to receive Jesus, to come to Jesus, to stop running from Jesus. If that's you, pray with me and just say, God, I'm sorry. I've been like a sheep. I've done everything those sheep are doing. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you receive me into your house because I want to give you my life. I pray that you come into my life and take over. I've been trying to do it myself, and I can't, I can't, I can't do that. So in Jesus' name, please forgive me of my sin. Give me a new start right now. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I believe, I trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord, as the manager of my life. I give it my all. Give you my all. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering. I pray that more than just a blessing, I pray an abundance, an overflow, not just to pay payments, but Lord, that we can use this money to reach more and more and more lost than ever dreamed before. I pray for influence that Circle J has ruined this trucker convoy this next, on the 2nd of March. And as we're doing the wagons for the veterans and as even this buck out here today, Lord, I just pray that you use us, give us greater influence to reach a further direction of people coming to you. I pray, Lord, for protection. And I pray, Father, for your presence 
in everything we do. In Jesus' name I pray.